Okay, guys, we're going to talk John Lundstrom and these turkey rumours. Uh, we're going to, and it's not even Christmas, and we're going to talk turkey rumours. There you go. Bad joke, guys. Bad joke for a Friday morning. At least we're only one day away from real football, thank God. We're also going to talk Leon King as well and how he's been labelled as a leader by his under-21s uh, national team coach. We're also going to talk a little bit about the SFA and their... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Perceived bottling of a, of a two-game ban on Brendan Rodgers. Yes, we'll talk a little bit about that as well at the end of the video. So stay tuned if you want a bit of more conspiracy theories um, as regards the SFA and as regards their uh, inability to do anything uh, that, would, that might upset uh, those poor, poor little... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Those poor, precious people across the city, you know, who who have such a, a paranoia and a, and a hypersensitivity to anything that, to do with their club. It, it really is quite sad. We're going to talk about that a little bit at the end, obviously, of the video. Let's start off by talking a little bit of John Lundstrom. Now, look, before we talk about those rumours, um, reports, whatever you want to call them, linking him to a move to Trabzon Sport in Turkey. We'll talk, like I said, we'll try to get to the bottom of those a little bit and kind of generally talk about, you know, the, the validity of these rumours and, and the pros of this move or the cons of this move, uh, you know, if you're John Lundstrom or if you're Rangers too. So, you know, look, I think, first of all, we've got to kind of, Couch this in the terms that John Lundstrom has been since Billy Clement came to Rangers, probably one of the most influential players on the squad. And you know, you you've got to kind of think of him as been a potential candidate, really, for Player of the Season. Obviously, Jack Butland probably will win it. He's been by far the Player of the Season this year. But but John Lundstrom has been absolutely outstanding. He really, genuinely has. Um, you know, the way he's controlled the midfield, the way he's been the sort of metronomic, he, he breaks up attacks, he's, he's said, added more assists to his game, he's getting forward a little bit more. You know, Philly Clement has really, I think, brought the best out of John Lundstrom and helped us to kind of rediscover the Europa League run Lundstrom rather than the Michael Beal Lundstrom. I mean, if we sort of break it down a little bit, you know, his premiership statistics are as follows. You know, 27 appearances in the premiership, which he's played 90% of our starting 11. He's been one of those players that has been, you know, hasn't been rotated at all. You know, he, he's only missed games when he's been injured or, um, you know, he missed games under Michael Beal. 87% of the minutes this year has had a 5% goal participation rate, three assists, uh, two particularly wonderful ones, the ball to Dessas. Against, I think it was, uh, was, it, was it St. Johnston away, I think, or was it St. Mirren away? I can't remember now off the top of my head which one it was. And then the beautiful lofted pass to Ridvan at Easter Road uh, for that Ridvan goal against Hibs. You know, certainly two that stand out there. There are only three yellow cards, which, you know, for John Lundstrom is pretty remarkable. But, you know, you look at beyond that, you know, he's played eight Europa League games and had one assist. He's played, the, played two of the four Champions League qualifiers. He's played four League Cup games three SFA Cup games. He's actually scored two goals in the Cup and one assist. He's actually got three goal contributions in three games. So that gives him a total this season of 44 appearances, two goals, six assists, eight goal contributions in 44. From what is perceived to be a holding midfielder, he's pretty good. Uh, played 1,831 minutes per goal, which is obviously you know, not a big surprise. He's not a massive goal scorer, is he? But in total, he's played 3,662 minutes for Rangers this season. And like I said, Philippe Clement sees him as a leader both off the field and on the field. Now, according to reports in a number of media sources, and look, I get, I understand 1 million percent that the media are prone to putting two and two together and getting five, shall we say. And the Turkish media in particular are very prone to getting two and two together and getting six. Um, but look, let, let's talk about this now. According to uh, you know some pretty reliable sources, uh, Borna Barisic at the end of his contract will be leaving the club and heading to play for Trabzon Sport in Turkey. That appears to be a done deal, as we reported on this channel a while back. But it now appears that Trabzon Sport uh, and their manager, who is called Abdullah Avici, I think you pronounce his name, I'm pretty crap at names, you know that, um, you know, is is allegedly interested in securing the services of John Lundstrom at the end of this season. Now, According to reports in a number of media sources, both in Turkey and in the UK, uh, Trabzonspor boss Abdullah Avici has reportedly approved a bumper 
contract offer for John Lundstrom. Now, as you know, Lundstrom will be free in the summer as he is out of contract. So there'll be no transfer fee to pay, meaning that uh, Traps on Sport can offer John Lundstrom a substantial signing on fee and uh, is believed higher wages than he would be offered at Rangers. Now, I did report previously that there was some slight doubts over John Lundstrom's future at Rangers, which were very much put down to arguments perceivingly over wages. Uh, Lundstrom, who's on about 20 grand a week at the moment, uh, rumours that the club want him to take a pay cut, rumours that he's not willing to take that pay cut, or it may even be asking for more money. Um, that uh, is our rumoured report. I don't know the truth of it. I'm just going off what I've read and what I've heard. Um, I can only kind of talk about that. Um, but you know, the, the, you know, Trabs on are certainly a, a team that could theoretically match those wage demands and, and, and offer him a much higher wage than than uh, Rangers can. Now, you know, you've also got to take that with a little pinch of salt because we all know that Turkey is a country that is reliable, very unreliable for the paying of wages. Although Trabs on Sport, along with uh, Besiktas, uh, Fenerbahce, and Galatasaray, are one of Turkey's top four teams presently, they currently sit third in the uh, Superliga, some thirty points behind second place Bish uh, Fenerbahce. Um, Besiktas are currently in fourth. Galatasaray lead the way. In fact, Gala and uh, Fenerbahce have only lost one game apiece this season. Now, with him off coming towards the end of his contract, now there has been stories in the media that Philippe Clement has been anxious to keep hold of the services of John Lundstrom and, and new contracts have been offered and contract talks are underway and, and you know, then have stalled. And, you know, that, that's, all, that's all that's been reported at this moment in time. Now, you know, we're still a way away from the end of the season, but, you know, there will be a thing desire within the club to get something sorted sorted sooner rather than later you know as the club begins to plan for the summer and plan for the off season as to what sorts of players they need to bring in you know particularly obviously if Lundstrom moves on uh, they need to bring in perhaps an experienced central midfielder to sort of bring some leadership to those rooms especially if you know the likes of Ryan Jack also move on this summer as he is also out of contract you know look there is some positives for John Lundstrom in this deal that he gets to go and play abroad that he gets a gets higher wages you know there's and we all know that you know football is a relatively short career, that these guys have got to earn money to set up their families for the future and set themselves up for the future. But there's also negatives as well there. Like I said, going to play in Turkey is a huge risk. We saw like we know how it's worked out for Ryan Kent over there. Um, you know, Lundstrom could well go over there and, and turn back into the old John Lundstrom and then be what position is he going to be in? He can have to find his way back into English, English football in a lower level and his career all kind of tail off. Uh, whereas, you know, perhaps staying at Rangers, he's got an opportunity to win trophies, to, to you know, to play in Europe, to, to really finish his career on a high. And, you know, in the past, John has indicated, hasn't he, that he loves the club and he wants to stay with the club and finish his career here. So, you know, look, I'm, I'm going to take all these reports with a huge pinch of salt at this moment in time. I don't think there is anything particularly concrete at this present moment in these stories. I think... You know, it is very much Turkish media perhaps drumming this one up. You know, the fact that Bourne is going there, you know, they're kind of putting two and two together and getting seven. Um, so, you know, there is those elements of it. I mean, look, I think there is some truth in the fact that Lundstrom's contract talks may well have stalled. Um, you know, given what Philippe said earlier in the year, um, the desire to get a deal done from the club's part, I think, you know, that, that, that it's kind of something must have glitched along the way. And look, we're still a hell of a way from the end of the season. You know, yes, there may only be eight, nine games remaining, but... We're still a way away from sort of making decisions on the future of these players, but it is fast approaching where decisions have to be made. Well, guys, look, we're going to obviously keep our ears to the ground, our eyes open, and look out for anything emerging about John Lundstrom. I'd love to know, get what your thoughts are. Look, I mean, I've got mixed thoughts on this. You know, I think John's been a fantastic player for the club this season. I think he's done brilliantly. Um, you know, he's done, he's been exceptional this season. He really has. And I think, you know, if he was to continue that level of play uh, and, you know, continue playing as he, he is, I'll be all in favour of giving him a new contract and, you know, keeping him at Rangers. Um, but, on the other hand of things, I can also see the point of view that if he's messing the club around, you know, how strong is his desire to stay? And at the end of the day, all we want really is people that want to fight for that shirt, that want to actually play in that shirt, that don't, you know, I think was it, I always use that quote, we want volunteers, not hostages. And I think that is very true in this case. You know, we don't want a player that doesn't really want to be here because then you've got to kind of 
start to question their commitment. You know, when when things get tough, when the going gets tough, are they going to come through for the manager? And are they going to come through for their teammates when you know they've kind of indicated they don't really want to be here? I mean, we don't. We're not. I'm not saying for a minute that John Lundstrom doesn't want to be here before anyone accuses me of that. Look, like I said, interesting reports. We kind of kind of monitor them, see where they go. Um, hope they're not true. Hope that he signs a new deal. Hope that he stays, of course. But look, every report we have to sort of think about, consider. And you know, what I do on this channel is I, I do present news to you, you know, but I give opinions. That's what it's about. It's not just about news. It's about opinions. You know, football is a game of opinions. It's, it's a game that, you know, there are so many different opinions about players, about tactics, about results, about refereeing decisions. And that's what makes our game so fascinating, so interesting. That's what makes the football the best sport in the world. I'm talking about real football, obviously not what the Americans term football. Well, let's move it along a little bit and talk about a Rangers youth product who has been excelling for his country this week, Leon King. Now, look, Leon was unfortunate, wasn't he? He was kind of thrown in the deep end uh, you know, last season in the Champions League and struggled in what was a very, very disastrous campaign for Rangers. Obviously, that Liverpool result in particular stands out and, and does hurt, especially when your ex-wife um, is a Liverpool fan. So, look... You know, at the end of the day, King is a player who I think has an awful lot of potential. And I would love to see Leon King given an opportunity to impress for Rangers. I think the issue that he's got is there's kind of a, a little bit of a doubt about what is Leon's best position. You know, he, he played centre back last season. And I think towards the end of the season, you know, in some of those games where he played with John Suter, he actually did quite a good job there. Uh, deputising for the injured and sometimes suspended Connor Goldson. And I actually thought he was very good. Um, you know, he's played in a number of positions this year, right back as well. He played in defensive midfield. You know, a couple of people talking about him being a future right back, possibly replacement for James Tavernier long term. Um, I mean, that was one of the stories doing the rounds at one time that Philippe Clement saw Leon King as being a future right back. I mean, that is, again, it, it is an interesting one, isn't it? You know, could Leon King possibly play in that position? Could he possibly be someone who, you know, could actually make a very good right back? You know, John, uh, John Ta uh, sorry, James Tavernier is not getting any younger. And I think we, we kind of forget that K King is only 20 years old still. He, you know, he's bang on six foot. He's... You know, he's kind of the perfect size for a right back these days. He's quite quick. He's got good ball skills. Uh, and, you know, there's been talk, um, like I said, that um, the from Philippe Clement that he could be a future right back for the club. I mean, that is certainly something worth exploring. Um, I doubt he'll have the set piece prowess of, uh, sorry, there's quite a lot of sound not all set pieces, but, you know, free kicks and, and penalties that James Tavernier has. But, you know, certainly something worth considering going forward, especially as Dujon Sterling now appears to be seen as more of a midfielder at the club. Now, Scott Gemmell, who is the under-21 boss, um, has been exceptionally impressed with Leon King. And, and he says, as far as he, he can see, he's ahead of his curve in terms of his rates of development. Um, you know, King won his ninth cap for Scotland the 21s in a 4-1 win over Kazakhstan. Um, and Gemmel ad admitted that he has been exceptionally impressed by King and how he's emerged, um, you know, at, at that age level. I mean, he's 20 years old. The majority of the under 21 squad are 21, 22. You can be, as long as you're 21 at the start of, the, uh, the, of that, that season, uh, then you're fine to carry on playing for the under 21s. Um, you know, he, like I said, he's been utilised all over for Rangers. Uh but, you know, Gemmel says he sees him as, says, I see progress um, in Leon. Um, I, I, you know, Leon's done great for us. And at the end of last year, he was playing in midfield. The important thing to remember is he's two years younger than everyone else. He's actually an 04. That really, that really says a lot for Leon in terms of the spell he's had in a Rangers team and how he's developing as a person and a player. To be in the under-21s, two years ahead of schedule really shows how highly regarded he is. Uh, Gemmel made King his captain on his second appearance in the 21s in a one more draw with Northern Ireland. Um, he's since been replaced by Liam Morrison and Josh Doig, both of whom have held the captain's armband. Um, Gemmel went on to say, you can see he's played first team football for more than just a handful of games that influences the confidence of the players. That transition from youth team to first team where they're all trying to get it, it gives them such confidence and belief they become naturally leaders. You can't pretend to be a leader. You can just say, I'm going, you can't just say, I'm going to be a leader today. It happens through time, 
through playing games at a high level and having confidence in your ability, something Leon clearly has. So it's nice to see that, you know, Leon has been talked about in these terms and has been identified by others as having talent, as been, you know, a, a real future star. And I think, look, one of the things as fans that we love to see, and I think I'm, you know, but, you know, in the majority when I say this is, Seeing your own players come through, seeing your players come through the academy and play for your team like Ross McCausen has done this year, like, you know, Nathan Patterson did in the past, for example. Um, so, look, that that is a big thing. There's something almost more special about seeing those players than the £5 million, £10 million pound signings, isn't there? Uh, because they're one of your own. They've come through your system. Um, King certainly appears to be one of those on the upward curve, and it's certainly going to be interesting to see if King is used towards the end of the season. Um, he's played three Premier League games this year and one Scottish Cup game. He's played four games and only played 14 minutes of first team football this season. The majority of Leon's games have come in the B team. But like I said, he did get an awful lot of first team experience last season. So it's an interesting one, certainly. But it's nice that he's being picked out for praise, um, you know, for from someone like Scott Gemmell, who is the Scotland under-21 manager. Now let's move it along and talk about them. Celtic FC. Brendan Rodgers was up in front of the SFA today over his comments uh, that he made uh, post the sending off of his player, who apparently Brendan Rodgers said that this was not dangerous play and it was perfectly fair and the red card was absolutely out of order and utterly ridiculous. Now, I don't know about you guys, but it does look like the player is trying to take the opposition's player head off. And at the time, as I said, what do Celtic fans and Brendan Rodgers want to see? This, the Hearts player's face rearranged, his head being removed before it is considered a foul. Under the rules of the game, if you endanger your opponent, which in this case the Celtic player is doing, it is therefore a red card. Now, Brendan Rodgers uh, at the time labelled VAR assist, uh, VAR referee John Beaton, who has been the subject of, of, of previous criticism from Celtic fans, um, as incompetent, uh, something that, that put him in front of the SFA Disciplinary Committee. Now, when managers are called in front of the disciplinary committee of the league for making comments about referees, it usually results in a two or three match ban from the touchlines because of, you know, the the SFA or the FA of whichever old league it is, wanting to send a signal to other managers that slagging off its refs in public is not permissible and is not allowed. So, you know, this is this, this is something that, that uh, you know, is quite clear. So let's think about this a little bit, shall we? Let's talk. Now, according to this, is, this is the result of that tribunal. Breaking, this is from PLZ Soccer. Brendan Rodgers will be free to take his place in the dugout at Ibrox next weekend. The Celtic manager, backed by QC Nick DeMarco, who is described as being kind of the super lawyer uh, for the uh, for football. He's also involved with Leicester City and trying to get them off their cheating on the PSR FFP case. Uh, was in front of the SFA this afternoon. He's been charged after branding VR official John Beaton incompetent. Um, that post-match interview was particularly hilarious. And the verdict was a one-match penalty with another game suspended, meaning he'll be in the stand for his weekend's clash against Livingston. So, that's right. He will be in the stands against Livingston, which, you know, I think you can all we can all admit is not really a punishment. Um, I did see a great a great tweet that went out on X earlier or on X, whatever it's called, saying that you could play seven players and hide all the old firm's coaching staff at different places around the ground. And the old firm would probably still win at Livingston, given the fact that Livingston are one of the worst teams ever to play in the SPFL. So, look, that's fair enough. Now, it just seems very odd that, and I know that I know that Demarco is this super lawyer. I, I, you know, I understand that. I get that now, but it does seem awfully suspicious that uh, this uh, this touchline ban is only one game, and that he's back for the Rangers game, especially after that lot from across the city started their bleating, their whining, their whinging, their moaning, their crying over the decision before it was even taken. Uh, Peter Grant even speaking out on the media saying that in his opinion, it would start conspiracy theories if the manager was to be banned from the dugout at Ibrox. Agent Grant doing his job for that lot across the city. For me, it 
seems very sus that they bleat on about a decision, bleat on about how unfair it would be to be without their manager for an old firm game. And then, who oh, Kel surprise the SFA, don't ban him for that game. Maybe I'm kind of also putting two and two together here and getting 345 million 672. But let's face it, they do have previous both parties that is guys let me know what you think of the stories we've covered in today's story and in today's video and as always guys if you could smash the sub it would mean the world to me to help grow the channel we are aiming for 6k it's a long way away before the end of the season but please let's help us get there thank you so much for watching glasgow rangers nation guys your support is appreciated your comments have been amazing thank you for your support guys as always two things one smash that like likes videos grow and number two remember always we are the people